Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. We had an electronic brake failure on the I-60 behind me, and we did a switcheroo between the uh, motor assembly, the entire motor assembly, from this I-40 to that I-60. So what we have left is the I-60 motor with the bad electronic brake on it, and we're gonna disassemble that and replace it with an upgraded model um, that hopefully will resolve any future issues with this unit anyway. Anyway, um, so stay tuned. Uh, I got the assistant there. He's going to help me out and we'll get to taking this thing apart and showing you how to remove it and replace it on the motor assembly. Just a really quick note on how these work if you're not familiar with them. The uh, Lutong style carts that are made in China the Icons, uh, I think Advanced EVs, and there's multitudes of other ones. They use an electronic parking brake. Uh, it's very similar to, say, a air conditioning clutch on your car where you add power to it and it clamps and unclamps depending on you know what the situation is. Um, on these, uh, when there's no power attached to them, they are in the closed mode where they hold the cart in place. Um, so when you let off the pedal, you'll hear a click or a clunk, and that's the unit going back together and basically that's your parking brake. Uh, subsequently also, uh, whenever you tip into the throttle, you put voltage to the electromagnetic ring inside there and it opens and allows the disc to spin. There's a pressure plate, a disc, and then the electromagnetic assembly that you can, uh, well, it's flywheel, a disc, and you could call it like a pressure plate. And when you, when you add power to it, it opens up and the disc is allowed to spin freely inside there. Uh, when you remove power, it clamps together and closes. What happens if you have a cart that loses power, um, the battery goes dead, there's a malfunction, one of the cables for the batteries come off, take your pick. The cart loses power. When the, in the instance that the cart loses power, if you're driving and you're doing 20 some miles an hour, that disc slams shut and all that forward momentum and energy is directed into that small disc and you'll see it on the video coming up here. And what happens is that just gets insanely hot and it starts coming apart. Um, subsequently, if you have that happen, do not try to tow the cart back to wherever it needs to be because it will be locked up. If it does start slipping, it's just gonna heat up and completely burn itself to pieces. Um, you could also burn your motor up, start a fire, any number of things. So that's in a nutshell how these work. Um, it's, it's a safety feature. It's a good safety feature. The only problem with is if you somehow lose complete power on the cart, um, they do close and the cart comes to a screeching halt. Um, and it's very hard to override it. There are two bolts on the side of the magnetic clutch that you use to, you screw them in they're already screwed in, but you tighten them. And what it does is it mechanically opens that, that side part up and allows the disc to, to free spin. But you have to have, uh, I forget what size it is, but it's a, you know, a hex key and you have to tighten them up, you know, equally and pull it open, um, which, you know, it's a good thing to keep in your cart. If you're going to have one, have a little tool pouch with that in it. And then, you know, it might save your bacon one day. So, Again, we're getting started here, and uh, I'll catch you on the end of the video. All right, here's the quick and dirty version. Here's your, your seal, dust and dirt and debris liquid seal that goes around here, all the way around the motor. This has to be in place. If you get dirt, sand, and whatnot in here, it's gonna wreck this system, and you're gonna be doing this quickly. Also, if the seal is ripped, like this one is, you need to replace it because if you let fine grains of sand pop in there, same deal. 
All right, so we got basically like I've, I've uh, said before, think of this as a car with a clutch system, a uh, manual transmission. And this is the transmission side and this is the motor side. So this, if you take your three bolts loose, these two stay, they're your manual overrides. Um, if you do have a cart that locks up on you, these two should be here. There should be three or four of the same size and then two other ones that are a little bit smaller. These should be all the way in, but just hand, hand tight, not tightened. Um, what you do is you get a, a hex Allen key and you tighten these up and what it does is it manually compresses that electromagnetic, electromagnet part, basically the uh, pressure plate part, and it, it releases, the, releases it from the, the clutch assembly inside there. All right, so don't have to mess with those three or four mounting bolts and it comes off. And there's your pressure plate. Obviously you see this one has puked itself all over the, the clutch has puked itself all over the pressure plate assembly. And if I didn't mention before, this stuff stinks um, horridly. Uh, you can taste it. Anyway, that's the, that's the look on the inside of it. These are your mounting points here and the pressure plate assembly moves in and out on these on these units and what happens is this the magnet assembly in here will either get burnt up stuff will get hooked or caked inside here and it'll stop working to where when it engages it won't come back here's the clutch for a better word basically it I don't know if you can make that out, but there's a huge freaking groove right in here on camera. I don't know if you can make that out, but maybe right that way. Anyway, but this one's toast. Um, and this is the pressure plate. And as you can see, it's planted a lot of material on here. This just gets so hot that it just starts literally melting and it starts balling up and depositing stuff everywhere. Like I said before, look, you can see all the all the crap that's in this bag that came from inside here. And that's just from it sitting in there. And like I said, uh, this comes off, you've got to replace this. Once these get hot, this gets hot, this gets hot. They, diff they malform. It's supposed to like literally drop on there. Like you start it, let go, tink. This one, it, it's dragging, binding a little bit. It's supposed to float freely in here. That's, you know, when the, when the magnet engages, it holds pressure. And then when it disengages, this is free to float up and not touch. You don't want it, you don't want it against here and dragging. Same thing with a clutch. Flywheel, clutch, pressure plate. You know, you don't want to ride the clutch. Same deal. If this doesn't float free, and this doesn't retract all the time. It's just like riding a clutch and this thing will just get hot and hot and hot and hot and hot. And the other bad thing is, is when these get all burnt up and hot, your, this right here, this right here, not a half inch below it, and on this shaft is your speed sensor for the motor. So if you cook this and this thing will get hot, this motor I couldn't touch for two hours because it was that hot. This will get hot and you'll burn up your speed sensor. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you can take all this off and drive the cart without it. You just don't have a brake at all on these carts. There's no other, there's no override. There's no manual brake. It's all electronic. So that's it. So what we got to do is take this off and we have the replacement. Here's the replacement. It's a little different design. We have to replace, we have to replace the flywheel, the center gear, and everything. Basically the whole thing comes off. But like, this is supposedly an updated design. Um, and I'll kind of show you more of it when we get to it. All right, this is future me. I just wanted to clarify something for you guys before we get to it. Um, I had the motor out. You don't have to take that out to replace this. It's more, I had it out, so I kind of wanted to show you where it was easily accessible by a camera 
and the light and everything and how to put it back together and how to take it apart. Um, if you do have the motor out, don't put it together on the bench. It won't fit back in there. I uh, just wanted to notate that. You'll have to put the motor back in and then put the electromagnetic brake back in kind of from the top down and then slide it onto. It's very tight in there with the suspension pipe and everything. So, you know, I just wanted to clarify before you watch the rest of this, don't put everything together. If you have the motor out, don't put it all together outside on the bench. Put the motor back in, then put the brake on in the cart. It's a pain in the butt. It's harder to get it in there, but it's the way you have to do it. Um, yeah, so back to your regularly scheduled program. All right, here we go. We're going to take off this pressure plate flywheel. It says it's 530 seconds. I guess that's the right size. By the way, I'm wearing the appropriate white shirt and light shorts to work on this because this stuff will get on you and stain everything. So make sure you wear white pants and white shirt. Your, uh, whoever does your laundry will thank you. All right, so that's off. We're gonna clean all this off, make sure that's it. I gotta get that. That's why I, I knew I'd forget something. All right, snap ring pliers are found. We are going to remove. Sorry if the light, lighting's not the best. I actually came right there. Usually when you do that, it's across the, uh, across the pond. All right, one gear off. That's it for that. All right, so that's all off. This is clean. I know this worked. Make sure you clean this out. There's all kinds of trash in here. Blow it out, vacuum it out, whatever you want. You don't want this in all this crap in your, your new setup. So I'm gonna crank up the vacuum off camera and bring you back in just a second. All right, so we're getting this all set up. Get you guys in here so you can see, hopefully. All right, we're putting the new, this is the new cog gear. That's on. Snap ring in here. See if we can't fling this across the shop. If you're wondering, 530 seconds is the, uh, the hex that fits down in here. Obviously they don't tell you. It's blind, it's buried down in there. You can't see it, you can't get to it. And you want to index this. Right, they're in there. It's pretty much it. Once you get the cog, the teeth lined up. See that? It's on there. What I did, I'm just taking the slack up. So now I'm going to do like even turns, crisscross pattern. 
like a couple just don't want to cock this thing down sideways I think I should have put blue on this. Obviously, if you can't tell, you don't get any instructions with this. You're just gonna kind of figure it out if you don't have the manuals. All right, that's that. And last but not least, the center cap. Yeah, okay. It's just a friction fit. It's just in there. Stay. You know it's going to fall. Y'all can laugh. Because I know as soon as I turn around, this is going to go down. I'm turning around. Walking away. Okay. All right, so it's on. That's it. And now the motor won't turn, which is a good thing. It's still heavy as hell. Actually, that wasn't bad. Now, what you'll have to do is, I should have done it while I had that one out. Um, your wires apparently come like this, and you'll need to take the, the plug assembly off the plastic plug assembly off that. So that means I get to open the stinky bag one more time. Okay, so those are back in. So now we're back in business and the colors are right. Okay, here's the uh, electric brake assembly installed afterwards. Here's the motor assembly, rear end, differential. Motor ends here, there's your brake assembly. It's very tight in here between the brake hoses. All right, you see that tube right there? That's a suspension tube. And it goes literally right down below that brake. So it's tight. You'll have to use a T25 Torx to tighten, to tighten the bolt up. The bolt that goes in here there's one way down here, right, right there. Sorry for the light, it's not any good. There's one there, there's one up the top, there's one on the front and one on the back here. This one, you have to use something long and skinny because you have this bar right here and you can't get the T-handle in there. But other than that, it's not too bad. Hook your wire back up there at the top, right here. And that's pretty much it. That's what it looks like. Sorry for the jiggle. Hopefully none of you have to do this because it's not fun. And by the way, did I mention it smells horrible? I didn't mention it before. I just wanted to mention it. But now let's go for a test drive.